This week is going to be quite an eventful week for the markets with major tech companies releasing their third quarter earnings results. There's also a lot of important economic data set to be released, starting with unemployment claims, month over month core PCE and revised consumer sentiment. And of course, probably the most important event, the chair of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, is set to speak. So what can we expect? And most importantly, what is the significance of this market data and what effect can it have on the stock market? To begin, this week Tuesday, tech giants Microsoft and Google will be releasing their third quarter earnings results, along with Coca-Cola, Visa, HSBC, and Texas Instruments, to name a few. On Wednesday, Meta will be releasing results, followed by Amazon and MasterCard on Thursday, and ending the week with ExxonMobil, Chevron, and AbV. So it is going to be quite an eventful week. Now, apart from the earnings season, we have probably the most important day coming this week, Wednesday, October 25th, where the chair of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, is set to speak at 2.35 p.m. So why is this especially important? Well, as head of central bank, Jerome Powell is in control of short-term interest rates. So his words carry significant weight. And traders listen closely to every single word he says and then try to pick up clues in regard to future monetary policies. Essentially, investors will be waiting to see what guidance he will provide on the US economy, employment, inflation, and most importantly, forward guidance on the direction of interest rates. And this last one is extremely important. The markets are waiting to see whether he will be raising the interest rates one last time this year in December, or whether he will be pausing rate hikes. You see, there's a term called hawkish. This is essentially a term that describes the willingness of the chair to raise interest rates. Now, it's important to note that just last week, the odds of a rate hike in December was only at 26%, but that probability has significantly jumped to 40%. Now, to be clear, we've known that the Federal Reserve was potentially planning on doing another 25 basis point hike sometime this year. But if he decides not to increase interest rates, that would be the best case scenario. However, even if he puts a pause on interest rates, there's still a high chance that he will indicate that they plan on keeping interest rates high for a longer period of time due to sticky inflation, which is also not a good thing. So essentially, there is bad news and then there is very bad news. Remember, just last week, CPI data came out and showed that the annual inflation was higher than their expectations by 0.1%. So this chart right here shows the recent uptrend in inflation data, and this is already giving him more reasons to potentially do another basis point hike. And of course, it will add him to the notion of higher interest rates for longer in order to get inflation back down to their target level of 2 to 3%. Now, there's a very important piece of information here that we haven't mentioned the bond market, and more importantly, the 10-year treasury yield. And by the way, I wanted to quickly remind you guys that Seeking Alpha is currently offering $50 off their premium plan, so go ahead and grab that deal before it's gone. You can find the link in the description down below. Just last week Wednesday, the 10-year yield traded past 5% for the first time since 2007. So why is this important? When the yield rises, it often suggests expectations of higher interest rates. You see, the 10-year yield is essentially a barometer for every type of loan. When the yield increases, it affects everything. Mortgage rates increase, student loans get pricier, car loans increase, everything. With the rise of the 10-year yield, bond prices have been dropping to all-time lows, and that is because they have an inverse relation. And it's important to know that every time you see a significant spike in the treasury yield, the stock market also suffers losses. Now remember, certain sectors of the market are more affected by rising bond yields, more specifically, value investments like utilities. Utility stocks are known for their relatively high dividend yields, and these dividends attract income-focused investors, especially when interest rates are low. When interest rates rise, fixed income investments such as bonds become more competitive in terms of yield, making utility stocks with their fixed dividends comparatively less attractive. So investments that have a large holding in utility stocks can potentially suffer another major fall if Jerome Powell signals another rate hike, like HDV or DVY. And this is exactly what we saw two weeks ago with the huge sell-off in the utility sector. So traders are actively watching the 10-year yield to see whether or not there will be an inflection point that signals a reversal. Now, it's important to note that there are many other factors contributing to rising interest rates, like the conflict in the Middle East, oil prices, etc. Now, second on the list, we have unemployment claims data set to be released on Thursday, October 26th at 8.30 a.m. So why is this important? Unemployment claims give investors an insight into the overall economic health. When the labor market is hot, in other words, when there are low unemployment claims, it can put an increasing pressure on inflation. And it's weird to think that low unemployment is a bad thing because it would typically suggest strong economic health. 
However, in a high inflationary environment, if the labor market is hot, that means there is an increased pressure on wages. With a shortage of employees, you have employers trying to attract them by raising wages. This then puts some upward pressure on the prices of goods and services in the economy, which ends up pushing inflation higher. So if the data on Thursday comes out lower than expectations, that is not a good sign. Now, it's important to remember that this is lagging data, so its effect on the stock market is not as pronounced. Friday morning is probably the second most important day investors are eagerly waiting for, which is when the core PCE data will be released, and this means personal consumption expenditures. This is extremely important because it is the Federal Reserve's primary inflation measure. Now, you may be wondering, well, what about the core CPI data, the Consumer Price Index? You see, PCE is very different from CPI, and the primary difference is consumption. CPI measures price changes of a fixed basket of goods and services. It doesn't reflect consumption patterns of individuals, so it doesn't adapt as quickly to changing consumer preferences and expenditures. PCE data measures changes in price paid by consumers for a basket of goods and services, so it reflects personal consumption patterns of individuals and it is more reflective of actual consumer behavior. Now remember, I am talking about core CPI data, not just CPI. Core CPI excludes changes in food prices and energy prices because they are very volatile and are influenced by many different factors. Last week when CPI data was released, the single largest contributor to rising CPI was rent prices. So the results were heavily skewed because of one specific factor. However, PCE includes a broader range of expenditures such as healthcare services, which are not heavily weighted in CPI data. So overall, PCE data is based on personal consumption expenditures and it allows changes for consumer behavior. And if the results come out higher than analysts forecast, then you can expect the markets to react negatively. And note that the market has already priced in the expectations of higher PCE data, and this is simply a reflection of the higher CPI data that we saw last week. And lastly, we have the revised University of Michigan consumer sentiment data. Now, this piece of information does carry a lot of significance. You see, consumer sentiment is financial confidence. It is a leading indicator of consumer spending, which accounts for majority of the overall economic activity. A high consumer sentiment number indicates confidence in economic conditions, while a low sentiment indicates concerns. So what impact does this have on inflation and interest rates? You see, high consumer confidence can lead to expectations of increased consumer spending, which can drive up demand for goods and services. And as we said before, this can put an upward pressure on inflation, which can cause interest rates to remain high. However, poor consumer sentiment shows economic uncertainty. So consumers are willing to spend less and save more and are more cautious about borrowing money. Central banks want to see economic growth and in order to stimulate that, they will be more inclined to lower interest rates. Overall, this week is probably one of the most eventful weeks in the stock market. We have earnings results from major technology companies and energy companies, along with major metrics for inflation data, and of course, Jerome Powell speaking on Wednesday. So I'm eager to see what will happen this week, and I'm pretty sure many investors are sitting on the edge of their seats. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.